Jamila Jamil from The Good Place, one of the best shows on TV. This is your first acting job of any kind ever. So do you feel like you've peaked and it's all downhill from here? Definitely the minute I, I stood on, on set with Maya Rudolph, that was the moment that I knew that life in itself entirely would be downhill from there. I was ready to retire. I was like, if we don't get picked up season three, that's fine. I should retire. I should end while I'm winning uh, because there is nothing better than acting opposite Maya Rudolph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all over for me now. Yeah. Uh, well, so for anyone who doesn't know, you were a TV host in England and then you moved over here. You had no acting aspirations. Yes. And then your agent just sent you on an audition for The Good Place. Mm -hmm. so how, yeah. Go on. Uh, just uh, how did it all come about? Um, I was, well, I wanted to be a writer when I came here. I was sort of with being on camera. Um, and I was writing something and working on it with three arts and three arts were at the same time making a good place. And so they got the character description and they just said, annoying in English, you should just go in for this. And I was like, no, 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 I don't know how to act. And then they told me that Mike Sher would be at the audition. And uh, I was so excited at the chance just to meet him. because I knew that there was no way he'd actually give me a job, uh, but I just wanted to meet him. So I went to the audition and, um, and for some reason, that maniac gave me a job, and I'm now to Harney. But was it liberating or nerve-wracking not being an actor going in, like, since you weren't really expecting anything and also not really knowing what the project was? Oh, it was terrifying. Like, I was worried that it was going to be Mike Schoen's first porno. Like, I didn't know uh, what I was getting myself in for. I wasn't told who the character was, what she was going to be doing. Would she be naked the whole time? It's the, we were given no information. I didn't know what the show was about. I just knew that Ted Danson was going to be in it, and that was it. And I was given fake sides and a fake name, and I had to read my lines with Mike Sher, which was terrifying. Uh, and then when I got the job, it was a matter of, like, you know, that you don't even have time to sink. You just have to swim. You can't let down Ted Danson. He is a national treasure. I would have been forced to leave America if I'd ruined this show. Everyone would know you as the, the woman who was offered a, a job opposite Ted Dancing. She turned it down. So. Oh, my God, yeah. No, I'd be deported. Uh, yeah. That would be fair. Um, but as terrifying as it has been to have to start acting opposite Ted Danson and the like comedy genius machine that is also Kristen Bell, um, it's also been an amazing way to learn. I don't think I could have found two better teachers to just steal from and learn from uh, and in a situation where as much as I was thrown in at the deep end I also was with these two genius actors 16 hours a day like I was bound to learn something mm -hmm. uh, and so I've kind of been just trying to almost via osmosis uh, learn what I can from these two wonderful people. Well before getting to set did you do anything else to prepare did you get like acting for dummies <laughs> did you do any classes? <laughs> No, in hindsight, I look back and I see the first like three episodes and I, I realized that I probably should have done that. <laughs> but I I didn't and they didn't want me to because they liked the way that I was playing to Harney and they didn't want anything to change. So I felt really unconfident and I offered, but they um, they didn't want anything to mess with what I was doing. So I, I kept doing that. And Ted Danson's basically just my acting coach. Who else can say that? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I understand Tahani was originally supposed to be a little bit sweeter and nicer in the original uh, character description and you really preferred to be more passive aggressive and did that help you like find the character and discover who she is like being that collaborative okay. with Mike? Yeah I think I think that um, American people might have quite a sweet like Hugh Grant or Mary Poppins version of English people in their head and I knew that Tahani was a socialite from London now, I used to be a DJ. I used to DJ at parties, sorry, for, um, for uh, socialites in London. I know that they are not sweet people traditionally. I'm sure some of them are nice, but there is passive aggression. Like, if she's a Londoner, she's got suppressed rage. She has all of these, like, hidden innuendos in her sentences. She's competitive. Like, London is a city where people, like, live on top of each other. They're all, and they're all cold, and they haven't ever seen sunshine. Like, it's full of there's a bit more bite to us than I think people realize. And so it made it feel more like home to turn her into a bit of a bench mm -hmm. in the show. Um, and also I based her off of some people that I knew, uh, one person in particular, uh, who is an actress who I will not name, um, but uh, it was 
really fun to exercise all of the things that I found annoying about that person in this role. Do you think that person knows you based Tahani on her? Probably. Uh, I blocked them on Facebook so that I would never have to find out. Oh. <laughs> I've had it from home since. I basically, you have to keep me here. Mm -hmm. You hide me in America. I can't go home. I'll be killed. <laughs> well, I love her because she's so pretentious and vain, but there's also something so endearing and sad about her. So how did you, uh, you being an acting neophyte approach, playing her besides just basing her on someone you already knew? Um, I think it was Mike Scher's masterful writing. Like he really wrote, he really is obsessive about empathy. I mean, the fact that people are able to like get behind and root for Eleanor's character, Kristen Bell's character, is a testament to both her acting, but also the writing of the fact that we think she's so hard to root for. And yet when you get back into her past and you see like what her parents were like and how they treated her and what built this really hardened person, there's no such thing as bad people. There's just sad people. And, um, and Mike showing us why Tahani is so competitive, why she's so insecure, why she's so fake and, and like her motivations are so corrupt was so brilliant because it humanized her and suddenly she's not just this like tall, irritating giraffe ex-model, she's this you know, broken bird. And I think it's changed the way that I now look at really annoying people. There are a lot of them. Mm. You feel like they're they're like Tahani's. There's there's more to them. I feel like I'm surrounded by Tahani's. It's like the front cover of being John Malkovich. You know, I could just like see Tahani's. And now I start to actually like feel for those people and realize that there's like there's pain underneath all irritating tendencies. I believe. Yeah. Well, I understand you didn't really like her at first, right? In the first season, you had trouble identifying with her, or or just you didn't really understand her yet. So, what was the turning point? Oh yeah, no, I thought she was a douchebag uh, until like episodes three before when we met her parents for the first time. That was immediately the moment where I started to resonate with that and and see that like, you know, our parents really can do, parents can, even accidentally, although with her parents it's quite intentional, really damage their children. And so once you see the root of the pain, um, I started to get behind her and then once she started to kind of like relax and be more openly bad even that in itself endeared me to her i take a sincere person over a fake like over someone who was over a do gooder anyway like a sincere and flawed and difficult person over someone who's like fake nice do you know what i mean yeah. like, really bad and then when she got drunk and went mad in season two uh, in that first episode of season two i found that really enjoyable to play you just got to see the real the real woman inside that was the first time we saw her loose and it was, you, you have to play like broad for the first time because she was so like uptight almost when in season one. Yeah, no, I think cargo pants to honey is still my favorite to honey ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, she went through a lot in season two. She almost married Jason. She became really good friends with Eleanor. And then in the uh, finale or the, the second to last episode, she uh, realized she needed to stop trying to impress her parents. So did you discuss the complete arc of her uh, second season with Mike before the season started? And how did you approach uh, playing her that season? Um, Mike always kindly sits each of us down and takes us through what's going to happen in the season, a kind of like rough arc. So you have time to prepare yourself and the writers brilliantly kind of pepper in little bits for you to kind of like grab onto to start building up to this like big moment that she's going to have. And um, I... I think I've always just really studied people. You know, I'm a writer, and so I write characters and I, I write essays about real people. I've always been someone who observes, uh, observe, uh, observes others, and so I think I probably just, probably, I think we all just steal things from things that we've seen in other people that we are around. Yeah. And, and also, like, I've had my own pain, and I was able to like, and my own like struggles with my parents. I was able to draw from that for sure, but it was just really important to keep her likable and redeemable that was, mm. that was the thing that i struggled the most with um, but hopefully i achieved it <laughs> <laughs> well she's she spent her whole life trying to win the approval of her parents and she realized she needs to stop and we don't see her back on earth uh when they reset everyone to go back on earth in the finale so where do we find her in season three who knows no. <laughs> 
and mine was working in a, like a weird clown bank. <laughs> is, it, is this a clue? Should we like zoom in now? <laughs> um, no, well, you will see her, but I can't tell you where. I can't tell you what she's doing. She's wearing fantastic things. And gonna get some bed action. That's all I'm gonna tell you. With, with Jason? With who? I can't tell you anything. <laughs> Like random eject buttons, I believe, like placed all over my house and in my car. And I feel like if I ever give a journalist uh, a clue about what's coming, I will be suddenly ejected into space and never heard from again. <laughs> You'll um, be marbleized like Janet. Well, you are a lovely woman. You seem like a very nice woman. Uh, it's not <laughs> worth it. It's not worth the death in space that I will get. <laughs> If you want clues, just ask Ted Danson. He'll tell you anything. He cannot keep a secret. I know. I, I, I know he told everyone the season one twist, and <laughs> no one believed him. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just ask. If you want my PIN number, ask Ted Danson. If you want anyone's secrets. <laughs> I don't know if he's actually as, uh, as indiscreet in real life, but if it comes to the big twist of a show, never trust that man. And they do, do they care not to just give him false information, or...? Do they just, it's Ted Danson, like we have to tell him everything and if he tells people, so be it. I don't know, I think he learned his lesson because of how much fun we've all made of him for telling everyone. <laughs> and I think he's actually got kind of like shame PTSD from it, so I think he's gonna like hold it all down. Oh my God. Very secretive on set this year, like no one, we aren't allowed to bring friends and family to set for the first time. It's like super secret. Wow, it's like lockdown. Walking dead like lockdown. You're like Game of Thrones now. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know who we are, but um, <laughs> we so rely on like, we have such a smart audience. Um, and it's, uh, you know, this is why I never understand why anyone ever thought that the show might be too high concept for network TV. People really get the show. And Kierkegaard doesn't go over their heads. Like, I love that Mike doesn't ever try to patronize uh, the audience, an American audience or any audience. Um, and so because of how smart and how on the ball and how attentive and thoughtful our fan base is, we have to really try to like not let them figure out what we're going to do. You know, we've got like uh, philosophy professors who watch the show with their class. Like in, in school, they will show the show to their class. That's awesome though, see, like you're, you're being taught yes. in higher education. Yeah, for sure. But because of that, we just cannot, we cannot let anything get out. It is the, I think it's the funniest season. Like, it's been like, we've had like applause breaks uh, in like read-throughs because the writing is so good. And like, the, the writers really know us as actors, but they also really know the characters. So there's so much they can do with it. Um, it's really fun that we see Eleanor find Ginny on Earth at the end of season two. Yes. Well, one of my favorite running jokes is Eleanor's burgeoning attraction to Tahani. And I know you're a fan of the fan fiction uh, between Eleanor and Tahani. So do you think they're actually soulmates? It doesn't need to be sexual. It could just be completely platonic because they had that heart to heart in the finale where she says like, you know, we became mates, which is British for friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, do think, I do think there's a chemistry there. Like they're really like, even just the way they trigger each other just kind of makes me Feel like they trigger and complement each other so brilliantly and they're so different and yet it just kind of works their different empathies kind of help them to understand one another um so i think they could be soulmates in that way i i have no idea where their relationship will go but i'm super down i'm super down for that relationship if it does turn into something uh and i know that a lot of people who watch the show are as well because they send me the most hilariously brilliant uh, paintings and, uh, and stories about um, the union, the sexual union. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's your favorite one so far, if, if you can even describe it? <laughs> uh, the done of Tahani uh, that I just put on my public Instagram uh, yesterday that someone had painted this artist called Beverly Love and she'd just written as if it was the Gap campaign logo, gay, just like across my face. <laughs> <laughs> People have kind of made up their own minds about Tahani, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, well, one of my favorite uh, themes about the show is just this idea of friendship and uh, how these people, they see each other at their worst, but they still want to hang out with each other and help each other. And I think that really 
was exemplified in the finale between Tani and Eleanor. And, you know, they, they don't, they won't go to the good place if everyone can't go. So is this something that you guys have discussed uh, between the cast or with Mike, just how it's, you know, this it's this group of people becoming friends slowly. Yeah, I think it's a lot about unconditional love, which I think is a lovely thing to portray in comedy. Um, and I think it's also it's also about how a very difficult situation can be incredibly bonding for people. And it should be a time where humans come together and we are in a in the most like tumultuous time in political history. I, I mean, that I've been alive for, that I've been generations back for. Maybe, okay, that was a complete overstatement. I'm just going to say that was t totally wrong, and I'm wrong, and I'm just going to shut up. But what I will say is that we are in a time of, like, mass fear and mass hatred, and there are all these attacks going on, and there's all this, like, political chaos all around the world. And um, in that time, more than ever, like, people should be sticking together, not, like, being ripped further and further apart because of fear. And this show shows that when you're in a really terrible situation, like being sent to hell, um, that is a time. And we are almost kind of like turning into some sort of hell in this world in certain ways. This is a time where we should come together and we should help each other. And yes, we have like very specific differences, but you know, if you try to understand one another, you can go to love each other. I do think there's like a massive message of love, like subliminally like filtered throughout the entire show, which I'm so down for. Mm. It's about taking a leap of faith. Like you, it's you, it's not tangible. You just need to believe and believe in people. Yes, and don't let your fear drive us drive you apart from others, and don't let your differences between other people drive you so far apart. Like come together. We can. You, they achieved so much more by working as a group. And no matter how many times our memories were wiped up, we always came back together as a group. We're just drawn together. I think that that's. I think it's a really brilliant message about the show. And yeah. we all act with a lot of love. We not only actually really like each other in real life, but we put so much love into just the way that we look at each other when we're acting. And I think there's a part of that that comes from like, making sure that we build that within the show. Uh, so Tahani is famous for her name drops. My favorite is the Spice Girls and uh, Artificial <laughs> has one too. <two. laughs> so what is your favorite name drop so far? I still think the most epic one was, you know, I haven't been this upset since my good friend Kanye was rudely upstaged by my other friend. No, so I haven't been this upset since my good friend Taylor was rudely upstaged by my other friend Kanye, who was defending my best friend, Beyonce. Um, I love that one, but I still think the first ever one was my favorite, which is where she name drops her godmother, Diana. She was a oh, yeah. Yes. But she was like visiting, well, I forgot. She, when that, they were picking up garbage, I know the scene. <laughs> up uh, mortar with my mortar shells with my godmother Diana doesn't matter what she was a princess of not really important like amazing <laughs> casual name drop to name drop princess bloody Diana it was so good that was the first one I ever got to do and that was the first moment that I really knew how much fun this woman was going to be today how many celebrities do you think Tahani has actually hung out with Oh no, hundreds. She's legit. She's the real deal. She really is a wanker. Like she's, like, <laughs> she's totally a networker and a social climber. I think she's hung out with them all. Honestly, Kavanaugh Wallace and Stephen Hawking actually thought about her. Oh, for sure. I reckon her birthday party looks like Ellen DeGeneres' birthday party. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, everybody's birthday. <laughs> uh, so, lastly, what what can you actually tease about season three? Can you give us three words to describe it? Anything? Funnier, fresher, filthier. Ah, oh, three Fs. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh. Fork and funnier. Yeah, it's, get, it's getting edgier by the day. It's really well written. I, I, I cannot wait for people to see it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're just gonna lock her dance in a little box somewhere before <laughs> the show ends. <laughs> is, is there another like, big twist at the end of the season? Have they told you or no? Uh, I don't know yet. I think they're still writing the finale, but I know that something's coming. I don't think we're just going to always do like big, massive twists. Yeah. Because be season two wasn't that big of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it would be corny if they tried to do that twice. I think they're kind of like um, twice in a row. So I think it's not so much going to be a twist as much as a kind of you have no idea what to expect from the next season. Right. But um, I know the rough idea for season four and it's. 
Well, can't wait for season three. <laughs> well, Jamila, it was great speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That was so fun.